Good day. This is Dr. Conrad Miller. We're doing a Fukushima update for you on food monitoring today from the New York City Symposium from March 2013 relating to the Fukushima disaster of March 11, 2011. That's when it started. So Ms. Folklers is presenting her picture of what should happen with the cesium and other radionuclides that were released from Fukushima and a general picture of releases of radiation over the years. So basically one becquerel is one atomic disintegration per second. Today, the Fukushima plants, units one through three, are leaking 10 million becquerels per hour. And from the atomic bomb blasts, 954 peta becquerels of cesium were released over the years. And we don't really know how much was released from nuclear reactors over the years between leaks, ventings, and accidents into the water and air. Chernobyl, we think, released 85 peta becquerels. That's 10 to the 15th. That's 15 zeros. So that is a billion million becquerels. That's a lot. And uh, the Chernobyl release is plus or minus 26 peta becquerels. And then Fukushima to the air and ocean, she says released 27 peta becquerels of just cesium into the air and the ocean. And 500 peta becquerels of noble gas. Um, Arne Gunderson had told us that the inventory at units one through three of cesium was about 758 peta becquerels, and he thinks most of that was released. The World Health Organization is testing for radiation, and this is limited, uh, Ms. Falkers tells us. Eden Health Foods is testing. The uh, United States Department of Energy, the EPA, Stanford University. The NOAA, which maintains buoys and gives you surf reports and so on, says that if the radiation and the cesium enters the Karashio current from Japan, then they will monitor the sediment and the water. However, we know from Professor Busler, who told us about the ocean impacts of Fukushima, that the cesium has already entered the Karashio current from the nuclear plant accident. And by March 2012, the front of the cesium was about mid-Pacific Ocean, and it was expected to fast-track to California this summer. So the NOAA should be testing the sediment and the water very soon. And since the accident in 2011, the monitoring in general has been severely curtailed, but she said it should be continuing because of biomagnification. It should be done over a longer time frame, not just a few years, and we need more funding. Meanwhile, 20% of the radiation monitors in the United States were out of commission when Fukushima occurred. And she said that the cesium that we see is cesium-134 and 137 did not exist in nature until man created them with nuclear power, nuclear power plants, nuclear weapons. She said that sampling a piece of food every once in a while gives you no real idea of the scope of contamination or bioaccumulation or pinpoints any hot spots of radionuclides that may exist. Now, food limits. Japan has a limit of 100 becquerels per kilogram in food of cesium. But the United States has a limit of 1,200 becquerels per kilogram, which she says way too high. And Canada is 1,000 becquerels per kilogram of cesium. So Canada could import very contaminated fish from Japan. Remember, they're hovering around 1,000 becquerels per kilogram, although they're banned in, to eat in Japan. And the United States would also accept this if we decided to take it in. She said that the FDA can decide to act or not act at any level of cesium contamination, so it's like having no standard at all, the way we're conducting ourselves with this. Kelp, seaweed, etc., concentrates 
iodine and other radionuclides, fish eat kelp, so the contamination radioactive would bioaccumulate and biomagnify in the fish. So we should continue monitoring Pacific fish for cesium. She noted that pistachios from California are at the level of 18 becquerels per kilogram. She noted that beef in Japan was tested between 650 and 2300 becquerels per kilogram cesium, so they pulled it off the market in Japan. But in the United States, if that beef was sent over here, it would be accepted. California grass is at 14 becquerels per kilogram, and California grass is the beginning of a potential biomagnification train. So it could concentrate cesium in cattle and meat that you eat eventually. The Berkeley Monitoring website says, for understanding food chain results and time dependence, grass and soil is what to look at. Then there was that shipment of 162 kilograms of green tea that was contaminated at 1,038 becquerels per kilogram of cesium, and that was shipped from Japan to France. And France rejected the, ship, the shipment, but since we accept 1,200 becquerels per kilogram, it would have been accepted in the United States. Now, then we have a, a very important point here. We're going to show you this little graph. The point is that cesium can bioaccumulate in the human body, and of course animal bodies too, and plants. If you ingest routinely, let's say, 10 becquerels per day, that can build up to 1,400 becquerel count within 500 days on this graph. There. So in a child who weighs 30 kilograms or 66 pounds, that could accumulate to levels of about 50 becquerels per kilogram. Now we know by post-Chernobyl Belarus, that's the country north of, the, of Ukraine, in kids, they did studies in kids then, that 10 to 30 becquerels per kilogram cesium concentration could lead to heart pathology and irreversible heart pathology at 50 becquerels per kilogram. And these elevated cesium levels can also cause hormone imbalance, diabetes, high blood pressure, angina, where you get spasms of your heart. And these are all aging diseases as well because radiation pre-ages the body. She also noted that as cesium passes out of your body, its radioactivity can start to damage your kidneys and your bladder, which in turn can further impede the clearance of cesium and other toxins and radionuclides from the body. So this will create a vicious cycle of bioaccumulation of cesium inside your body, occurring more quickly, and levels could be higher than the graph shows from chronic ingestion. The International Council on Radiation Protection made this statement. I'm going to put this up in a little bubble for you so you can see it. These are very sad words for me and everybody, I'm sure, can follow them. Uh, they, they want to make contaminated food accessible so that restrictions on local produce can be avoided. There may be situations, this is their statement in number 111's uh, publication, there may be situations where sustainable agricultural economy is not possible without placing contaminated food on the market. As such foods will be subject to market forces, thus will necessitate an effective communication strategy to overcome the negative reactions from consumers outside the contaminated areas. So Ms. Falker says, so they're saying, don't tell us contamination levels or inform us of any possible harm. And I say, besides the, the heinous act of putting this contaminated food on the market, you're also trying to trick us with misleading lies, necessitate an effective communication strategy to overcome the negative reactions from consumers. The ICRP that made that statement does admit that even small amounts of cesium can by accumulate in our bodies to this level of the 1,400 becquerels per kilogram. She recommends five becquerels per kilogram for anyone as a level that 
maybe even too high. And she also recommends, along with the Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network, FFAN, Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network, that a database be set up that is publicly available so cesium monitoring can continue for consumers and research scientists. No matter what the cesium levels are, they should be reported. And widespread testing is needed. So you can check silence deafening.com to see further information about this 5 milligram per kilogram recommended monitoring level of cesium and also look up beyondnuclear.org and that was from Cindy Folker's lecture to the New York City Fukushima Symposium this is Dr. Conrad Miller watch for the next part of the update coming up to follow